Hey, I'm Matt. And I'm Dustin. And we're Local Historia. We're here at Bullsburg to take a look at the Columbus Chapel and Bull Mansion. Let's check it out. We're here with Bob at the Bowl Mansion in Columbus Chapel. Bob, thanks for having us today. Our pleasure. Great to have you here. Thank what are you, you going to show us today? Oh, we have a great uh, agenda for you. Again, we'll just be able to just to skim the surface, but we're going to go through the Columbus Chapel, which was moved from Asturias, Spain, back at the turn of the 1900s. Uh, that was from Columbus's castle. And then we'll go to the Columbus Vault, which houses one of the largest collections of Christopher Columbus artifacts in the Western Hemisphere. And then we'll go behind us to the first floor of the Bull Mansion, um, see some of the things from uh, King Tut's grandparents to uh, Napoleon artifacts. And then from there upstairs for a very quick look at the extensive armory that the family has. Well, thanks so much for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. And again, uh, we love showing off what we consider to be uh, one of the uh, most unique museums in the world. This is Columbus's chapel that was moved from the north of Spain. Um, the castle was built in 1450. The only thing in the outside from the castle is that marble cross. This is a cross and a crown, but from centuries of worshipers touching it, they've worn it down. So come on in. So you're looking at Renaissance art, 500 years old. Uh, very historic. People will make a pilgrimage to come to hear right. from other countries, right. especially South and Central America. So the bulls married into this uh, inheritance, right? And Correct. So towards the end of Aunt Victoria's life, she bequeaths to her niece all the contents of the Columbus family chapel and many of the prime items from the castle. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say the contents, as you can see here, it's not just the furnishings, it's the balustrades, it's the windows, it's the altar, the doors. They literally gut the structure, leaving behind an empty stone shell. So our stone on the outside is good Pennsylvania limestone, but everything else, Colonel Bull being an architect, puts everything back the exact same way. Yeah. So it's truly amazing. So as I said, people will make a pilgrimage to come here, especially from all over yeah. South and Central yeah. America. I can see why, for sure. Very special. And beneath your feet are the generations of the bulls interred in a mausoleum. Oh, really? We're actually on the second floor. Yeah, so it is a sacred space to begin with. So yes, they, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so many other things. So our actual tour takes two hours, an hour and a half yeah. to two hours. So again, I just gave you a few highlights yeah, in here. So yeah, people really need to come here and get the full story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. Yep. So should we go to the next place? This, this is the Columbus Vault. Okay. Another one in. People at the time of Columbus thought that if you sailed across the ocean, you would fall off, the edge. fall off the edge, right? That's what we were taught. It's completely bogus. It's a fairy tale when we were taught it. It was a fairy tale at the time of Columbus. Here is the reality. Over 2,000 years before Columbus, a Greek named Erosthenes, living in Egypt, calculated the circumference of the Earth so precisely that not until we put a satellite in space did we have a more accurate measurement. They knew the world was round. Ptolemy, the father of modern map making, comes 300 years after Erosthenes in 150 AD. Here's a copy of his map. Columbus, I'm reading his ship log right now, he has with him a copy of Ptolemy's map writing in the margins. Columbus knows the world is round in 1492, but they think it's 33% smaller. 
never in my life have I seen a museum comparable to this. And I've seen the world's finest museums. Why is this so incredible? I mean, it sounds like a lot of hyperbole, and I'll often say that to guests as they come. And I said, let me know as you leave what you think. And when they get done with their tour, they come and say, never in their life have they seen a museum like this. Here's the reason. Eight generations of the Bulls lived here for over 200 years. How many houses do you know where more than two or three generations have lived? That's like the castles of Europe to have that many generations here. Secondly, the Bulls were prominent on the local, state, federal, and international stages. They're connected to the who's who of world history. In addition, these people were pack rats. They literally kept everything. I can tell you what variety of apple trees they planted in 1896 that they purchased from Starks. It's incredible level of detail. We have so many artifacts here that uh, Penn State Petit Library has on uh, hold for us. We've loaned to them um, letters, postcards, pictures, etc. There's just so much. We're talking hundreds of thousands of original artifacts. So I love our nation's historic homes like Mount Vernon, Monticello, but the reality is you're not seeing a lot of Jefferson and Washington's actual artifacts. Most things are, are either reproduction or period pieces, but here everything is original from the family and each generation accumulating. We have the very first generation, David Bull, who comes from Ireland in 1790s. We have his Pennsylvania long rifle signed from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It's truly amazing. Finally, we're gonna check out the Bull Mansion. We're gonna go through a few rooms and check out the new armory exhibit upstairs. So we are methodically going through, emptying things out, etc. cetera. Um, you're gonna see right here, again, disheveled, um, but stacks of 120 plus year old clothing, Parisian fashions. This is the family that starts the French fashion industry. <laughs> it is incredible. You've heard of Louis Vuitton? Yeah. Yeah, they give him his start. We have six Louis Vuitton trunks from the 1890s. It is incredible artifacts. Every room in this mansion, the original silk walls are still intact. Never in my life have I seen another mansion in the United States with the original silk walls still intact. This is what wealthy people would put on their walls to depict their wealth. Right. Now, Colonel Bull dies right here on this floor in 1938. And on his deathbed, he says, I had the pleasure of inheriting three fortunes and spending it all. He died broke. But what did he do with his money? Well, he built that military base across the way, funded the troops out of his own pocket for World War I, and then he built the Bullsburg Fire Company, the Bullsburg Bus Company, the Bullsburg Telephone Company. If it was Bullsburg, he did it. This came for all from the Columbus Castle. So these are actual weapons. <laughs> that that was huge. Real. Yeah. The morning star. And so how this is set up, it goes from uh, medieval times to now colonial Napoleonic. And they're in all the different wars. Yeah. And they would just accumulate just, all just these things. Compile it. Yep. And then people would then give them other items because okay. they knew they, they were accumulating. Yeah. And then Colonel Bull brings back those two shipping containers from World War One. And that's how they got all of them. And so and then he kept the best for himself. Yeah, and I wonder if the Bulls themselves would display it and show guests, and you know, and you guys yeah. are continuing that. You know, they would, yep. they wanted to show people, I'm sure. And yep, they collected it as well. Yep, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, Bob, why is it so important for us to preserve local history, just like the Bull Mansion? Well, that's a great question, and many people ask about that. Why not just turn it over to the Smithsonian? Well, several reasons. First, the, the good news here is that we have hundreds of thousands of original artifacts from the eight generations of Bulls that lived here. The bad news is we have hundreds of thousands of original <laughs> artifacts because they all do require special curation, which we receive no local, state, or federal funding. So uh, the tour dollars and things, we stretch those dollars to do it. But why is it important? keep it here. It tells a story. And the story here is such an exciting one. It's not only about the eight generations who were prominent on the local, state, and federal 
stages and international stages, but also it shows America's place in the world as it's growing. And so our history here ties in with things from every continent on earth. I mean, that's an incredible story for a local museum. And then to have the artifacts and the provenance, the stories that go with each of those artifacts, it really makes it a, an exciting story. And so by learning from those, it's often said, we are doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past if we don't learn from our history. And I think that's never more important than our current events. Hidden Happy Valley is a series highlighting lesser known places and interesting spots in Center County. It is brought to you by 